Hello, my name is Eric Chappelle, author of AutoCAD Civil 3D 2013 Essentials, and this is the additional exercise for Chapter 10. So in this exercise, we're going to apply what we learned about sections and section views and apply them to the Madison Lane uh, alignment and corridor. So the first thing we need to do is set up the views of our screen. We're going to divide it into three viewports, plan view, profile view, and section view. So to start off doing that, I'm going to go to the view menu. And it's really kind of a matter of preference, um, how you want to configure your viewports. I'm going to do this one here, three left. And that's going to split my screen up into three viewports, a big one on the left that takes up half the screen, and then two smaller ones. I'm going to use the big one on the left as my plan view. And close down some of these windows I don't need. And in the top right, I'll make this my profile view. And then this one down here is going to ultimately be my section editor view. So for now, I'm just going to zoom into the corridor. But whenever I'm using the section editor command, I actually want it to be housed in this viewport down here. So that's it. It's pretty simple to create the three viewports, plan view here, profile view, and ultimately the section editor view will be here. And that takes care of the first task. For our next task, we need to remove the ditch on the left side of Madison Lane between stations 1 plus 50 and 2 plus 50. So this is a similar situation to what we had at the beginning of Jordan Court where we had a ditch, and you can see it's actually made its way back in here again, um, that really didn't need to be there. Um, this is only a not even 200 feet of ditch and uh, as you can see the water is just going to pool there and, and lay there alongside the road so why don't we just take that ditch away let the drainage fall onto the road and continue along its way so to remove that ditch we're going to use the the section editor and actually want to use this as our section editor so I'm going to zoom into that area in this view click the corridor click the section editor command and here's where we want to create the override that removes the ditch. Now in order to do that, we need to go the, to the parameter editor. And let me make this nice and big because there's a lot of information. And we want to go to the left daylight because this is the left side of the road. And we want to change some values on the ditch to basically make it go away we're going to change the four slope width of the ditch to zero and we're going to change the back slope width of the ditch to zero. Those are the two widths that define the the size of the ditch as, as well as the bottom width. So we want all of those values to be zero. The ditch kind of shrinks up and disappears. And then what we want to do is we want to apply that over a range of stations. I basically want to apply that change from 1 plus 50 up to this station right here, which I'm really not sure what that is, but I can go the whole way up to 2 plus 50 just to make life easy on myself. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go from 150 to 250. So I'll say apply to a station range. It's already set up for 150. I'll just type in a 250 here and click OK and it should remove all the values for that ditch. Now I can close down my section editor and I can rebuild the corridor and you can see the ditch has been taken away. So by using the overrides in the section editor and applying them along a station range we can make a change to the corridor such as removing a ditch and that takes care of the second task. For the third task we are asked to create a sample line group for the purposes of design and we want each sample line to be located at a corridor section so in other words each one of these blue lines that cuts across the corridor that's where the corridor sections are located. So I'll go to the home tab and click the sample lines command. It's going to ask me to pick an alignment and I'll just hit enter and pick Madison Lane. The sources that I want to sample, 
the EG surface, and the Madison Lane corridor. Those are the two things that I've selected. I'll click OK, and now I need to tell it where the sample lines are located. And that's with this little drop down right here, and this is where I say from corridor stations. So I'll click that. It wants to know how wide, left and right, do I want the swath widths to be. I'm going to accept the default of 50 feet, left and right, and click OK. And now we see, I'll hit Escape to uh, finish the command, we can see the sample lines that correspond with each corridor section on the corridor. And now just to kind of demonstrate how you would utilize that, I'm going to create a couple of, of corridor sections uh, to look at for design purposes. So I'll start with 0 plus 25. Let's take a look at 0 plus 25. So I'll go to my section views command and I'll say create section view. And I want to base it on Madison Lane. I should have named this sample line group design or something that indicates that it's a design section group or sample line group, but I'll just have to remember that it's uh, sample line collection 3. And I want to do 0 plus 25, which is this one right here. So I'll go ahead and, and create the section view using a design style. And there it is. So there's my section at 0 plus 25. I can see I've got a ditch on the right, no ditch on the left get a sense of the shape of the lanes, the shape of the ditch, and even have some labels there that show me some key elevations on the section view. And I could do that for as many sections as I want, and I can use these, these section views as a tool for analyzing and maybe adjusting my design. So that takes care of task number three. So for the next task, we are asked to create another sample line group, but this one is going to be for sheet creation as opposed to design. So it's going to be at even increments every 50 feet. And we also want to create section views um, that are arranged in sheets like we've done for Jordan Court in, in the previous exercises. So before we get too far along with that though, I want to do some housekeeping. I'm going to take my generically named sample line collection 3 and change that to something a little more meaningful. I'm going to call it ML Design for Madison Lane Design. And then I'm also going to go into the properties of that sample line group and change the styles so that we kind of make the, um, the sample lines disappear. Not completely, we just won't be able to see them in the drawing. So I'm going to change the style of the sample lines in that group to no display. And you can see the lines go away, but the labels are left in place. So I'm going to do one other thing. I'm going to go to the Edit Group Labels command and just simply remove the labels. So the sample lines are still in the drawing. You can see them listed here. We've just made it so that we can't see them. So now it'll be a little easier to see the results of what we're about to do. So I'm going to create another sample line group for Madison Lane. And I want to go in here and say, by default, it wants to create additional sample lines on the group that's already been created. I want to create a new sample line group, so I'm going to go here, and I'm going to call this ML Sheets, okay, for Madison Lane Sheets. Same things that I'm going to sample, the EG surface and the corridor. And I'm going to pick a different style this time, road sections. That's going to be the style for my corridor. And for my existing ground, I want that to be obviously existing and not finished. All right. So that's a little bit of style selection there. And then the most important thing is choosing where the sample lines are going to be located. So this time, instead of from corridor stations, I'm going to do by range of stations. And this will let me do a nice even increment by going down here and saying, let's use sampling increments and let's say 50 feet across the board. Tangents, curves, and spirals, even though I don't have any spirals in this alignment, let's just take care of all of them. Um, yes, let's do the range start and the range end, but let's not do any other geometric uh, points along the alignment. So when I click OK and hit Enter to complete the command, I should see sample lines at a nice even 50 foot increment. All right, so that takes care of the sample line portion of uh, 
of that task. Now that the sample lines are in place, I want to create sheets for those section views. So we'll go up here to my section views command and say create multiple views. I want to create multiple views along Madison Lane and I want to use the ML Sheets sample line group. Section view style is road section. That looks good. We'll click next. As you can see it's kind of a wizard um, configuration. Like we've done in the prior exercises, I'm going to go out and pick the template from chapter 10. So I'll go to C, Civil 3D Essentials, chapter 10. There's my sections.dwt. And let's go ahead and do 40 scale. Click Next, Next. All of these settings should be good and I'm going to go ahead and just say create section views put them right above Jordan Court section views and let's see what we get everything looks pretty good except we've got those labels on the existing ground and to handle those we'll click on one of the section views and we'll go to view group properties and we're going to take a look at the section labels so next to EG here where it says change labels I'm going to click edit change that to no labels and that'll take those existing ground labels away and that looks very good it looks a lot like the uh, the sections that we have for Jordan Court and that satisfies the requirements for task number four and now for task five we want to use section views once again for a design purpose so what I'm going to do is uh, I want to create a section view for one of my uh, design sample lines. Now since those are turned off and I can't see them, I'm going to access this through Prospector. And under ML Design, I've got my list of sample lines. You can see that first sample line right there. I'm going to select it, and that's going to get, bring up my ribbon. And then I'm going to pick Sample More Sources. And what I want to add to my sources is the Jordan Court Finished Ground Surface. All right, I'm going to pick that, bounce it over, and now I can see the Jordan Court Finished Ground. So I'll click OK. You can see the, even though that sample line is not visible, it still selected it, and I can see the grips shown there. So now that the grips are selected, I'm going to create that section view. So I'll click the tool to create the section view and I'll just uh, accept the defaults and place it here in the drawing. All right, now we've got some of those labels and I didn't I wasn't really conscious of style, so let me uh, escape out of this command. I'm going to click one of those labels that I kind of want to get rid of and click edit label group and just remove those labels from that uh, surface section. Now I want to be able to differentiate easy, more easily between the, the Jordan Court surface and the other surfaces. So here we've got the sample through the corridor of Madison Lane. Here we've got a section representing the existing ground. So I'm going to go to section properties and change the style of that to existing ground. So now we can see the red is the existing ground and the blue is the profile of Jordan Court or the section of Jordan Court. And what we're looking at is right here. Look at how well the crown of Madison Lane is tying into the center line elevations of Jordan Court. That's the good news. Something we have to be conscious of, however, is when you get down to the the extremes, the edge of the lane here and the edge of the lane here, there's a big elevation discrepancy between the Madison Lane elevations and the Jordan Court elevations. So we're going to have to do something to our design to kind of warp this lane and swing it around up into Jordan Court and swing this lane down and around into Jordan Court. And actually the intersection wizard, if we utilize it, does all of that for us. It handles that transition from 
the section of one road into the profile of the intersecting road. But just by looking at this, we really get a, a, a long story about all of the things that are going on in this design, in this interface between the two roads that um, we've already addressed with the matching center lines, but also what we need to address with the edges of the lanes not matching well into the elevations of the intersecting road. So that's a really good example of how to use section views as a design tool to tell you a story, a detailed story about what's going on at a specific location. So that completes task five and that completes the additional exercise for chapter 10.